So far in these videos, we worked with one way of writing the formulas for population and sample variance and standard deviation. In this video, we're going to look at another way of writing them that are called the computation formulas. Let's focus that in a little bit there. Uh, let's first look at the ones that we're familiar with. Let's just write them all out. These are the definition formulas. And I'm just going to make a little grid, make them nice and clear. We've worked with variance, standard deviation, both for a population and for a sample. And so you've already seen all these formulas before. Variance sigma squared is equal to the sum of. And in order to save us just time and space with the writing, I'm just going to mark up here for all capital sigmas, remember the sigma just means to add up, uh, we're either going to use from i equals 1 to i equals n, that's for our population, or we're going to use from i equals 1 to i equals little n, that's for sample. That way we don't need to rewrite that over and over and over and over and over. Um, so here this is add up all i's from i equals 1 to i equals capital N because we're dealing with population. Each x minus the mean squared all over capital N. And the standard deviation we remember is the same thing except there's a square root. For samples, very, very similar, s squared. Except instead of being the population mean right here, this is the sample mean. And we have n minus 1 in the denominator. Same thing over here, except there's a square root. These formulas are really good to know and be familiar with because as the definition formula name implies, these give you the definition, the mathematical intuition behind where these are coming from. We're taking each value, we're subtracting the mean, we're taking the distance uh, there and squaring it to get a positive number, and then we're dividing by the total number of values to get that idea of that average distance from the mean. However, this works very well if we have a mean that is a whole number, or if we're using the store function in our calculator, works just fine. But if we have a whole lot of decimals, a whole lot of rounding, this gets really, 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 really annoying to work with really fast. And so there's a second set of formulas that's called the computation formulas. Um, let's write those out right below here. computation formulas. And same as we wrote above, for all sigmas we're using i equals 1 to i equals n for a population, or i equals 1 to i equals little n for a sample. Do our table again. Uh, 
Okay. Now our formula is going to change slightly. Population variance, sum of x squared minus sum of x quantity squared over n, all over n. Standard deviation is the same except for the square root. Sample is the same except for the n minus 1. The video alternate formulas shows you the mathematics of how we get from this formula up here to this formula down here. They actually are literally the same thing. Every, 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 every single problem that we have, if we use these two formulas, we're going to get the exact same answer. They'll give you the same one. Uh, the reason that we have this at all is because the computations are much, much, much easier in these ones, especially if you would normally get a decimal for the mean. And I'll be showing you how to do those in just a sec. Let's compare the same problem done using the two different formulas. So over here, let's do the definition formula. And over here, let's do the computation formula. And let's do the, oops, I didn't write the problem. I'll add the problem up here. Find the sample standard deviation of the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. So using the definition formula, s equals square root sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. First thing we have to do is find the mean. We know that to do that, we just add these up. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, all over 4. Uh, so 1 plus 3 plus 5, that's 9, that's 16. To calculate this, we need to do the sum of x minus x bar squared. So we're going to do that for each of these x's up here. So 1 minus 4 squared, 3 minus 4 squared, 5 minus 4 squared, 7 minus 4 squared. So that's negative 3, negative 3 squared, 9, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, uh, 3 squared is 9. And if we add those all up, sum of x minus x bar squared, that is 20. So now if we put this into our formula, This whole thing was this. N is 4. We have four different values. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if we put that in our calculator, second square root of 20 divided by 3, 2.582. Notice if you didn't do this 4 minus 1 in your head to get the 3 right here, you would need to have parentheses in the denominator. As is, this is fine. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, let's look at the computation formula and just confirm that we get the exact same thing. So over here we're going to be using the formula s equals square root 
sum of x squared minus sum of x quantity squared over n, all over n minus 1. So we need sum of x squared and we need sum of x. Notice this is we add up the x's first and square them. This is we square each x and then add them up. So first let's list out our x's, 1, 3, 5, 7. Add them up, that gives us the sum of x. Notice we did this right over here already, it is 16. x squared, 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared 25, 7 squared 49. Sum of x squared, if we just go to our calculator and add those all up, let's see, 1 plus 9 plus 25 plus 49, 84. Now to use our formula, s equals square root, sum of x squared, notice this one right here, same as this. This one is this up here, n, 1, 2, 3, 4, all over 4 minus 1. Make sure you make your square root big enough that it contains this as well. Now to put in the calculator, square root, parentheses around the whole numerator, 84 minus 16 squared divided by 4, close the numerator, divided by 3 or 4 minus 1. If you're going to do it like this, make sure you have parentheses in the denominator. Notice that's the exact same thing in both of these. One other really key part is that we can use our calculators in an even shorter way to check our work. Make, make, make sure that you are able to do this because it will catch errors um, that otherwise are really, really, really easy to just let slip by. You do need to show your work for all problems, but always use your calculator to check. So the way we use our calculator, I'm going to go to the stat button and then edit right here so hit either one or enter and then you see there's a list of numbers here if your uh, calculator does not say L1 at the top um, we just need to reset it come talk to me go up to L1 and hit clear and then when you push the arrow going back down again it'll clear out those numbers so we're going to put in the four numbers that we had at the top one hit enter 3, enter, 5, enter, 7, enter. And once we have that list in, it can be any length, go back to stat, go over to calculate, and then right here you're going to see one var statistics. Hit enter, and then enter again. Notice this is giving us those different pieces that we needed. Let's write down what each of these mean right down here. X bar is the mean. Sum of x and sum of x squared are in the computation formula. S of x, sample standard deviation. Sigma x is the population standard deviation. deviation. N is the sample or population size. Right here and then if you arrow down you're going to see some other ones. Minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and max. 
Um, median, MED is the median. Uh, that's going to be useful. Um, these other ones, like they just say, minimum, maximum. This is the 25th percentile, Q1, and the 75th percentile, Q3. But heading back up, so notice that this is very useful. This checks all of our data that was up here. Mean is 4. Yes, indeed. Sum of x is 16. Sum of x squared is 84. That's right there. S of x is 2.582. Rounded, that's the same number that we had. Notice Notice that variance is not listed here, only standard deviation. How do you get the variance? Well, as we know from our formulas, the variance is simply the standard deviation squared, both for samples and for populations. So to get the variance, just square the appropriate standard deviation. And there we go.